I'm Liz Strum of the Wisconsin Technology Council, here with another edition of WISBusiness.com, the show, brought to you by Grant Thornton and Madison Gas and Electric. On today's show, Tom Still's commentary focuses on efforts to build venture capital in Wisconsin. And Rod Heiss, president of the Luminous Group, talks about the latest tech leaders survey. I'll be right back with the WISBusiness.com stock report. What has made Grant Thornton one of the largest accounting organizations in the world, with resources in more than 100 countries worldwide? Is it their global capabilities, or is it their passion for how they serve their clients? Grant Thornton. And now, here's the WISBusiness.com stock report for early January 2010. Rising wind energy. State regulators okay construction of a new wind park in central Wisconsin's Columbia County. It's due to be the state's biggest. The wind park will cost Wisconsin Electric at least $335 million. In addition, a $2 million federal grant will be used to train about 300 Wisconsin workers in wind energy technology. They'll break ground for the project later this year. And falling, farmland values. The state reports the assessed value of farmland will drop by almost 2% this year. The Wisconsin Farm Bureau Federation says the drop was expected given the depressed housing market. The Farm Bureau also expects it will result in property taxes being held in check despite expected rate increases. The organization warns conditions could lead financially pressured farmers to sell off their land. That's the WISBusiness.com stock report for this week. Go to WISBusiness.com for more on these and other stories. And now, here's Tom Still with his Inside Wisconsin commentary. Wisconsin entrepreneurs and researchers do a world-class job of coming up with ideas that will transform healthcare, energy, manufacturing, and other industries. But finding the investors to move those ideas forward is often a problem. While Wisconsin has seen a steady rise in angel capital investments, at least before the recession began, it has always lagged in the next stage of private equity investments, venture capital. These rounds of investment, usually beginning around $2 million, can help turn a startup into a thriving company. Look for 2010 to be a year in which private and public efforts to build Wisconsin's venture capital supply will be stepped up. At least three private funds that intend to invest in Wisconsin and the upper Midwest are busily raising funds right now. An effort to build a fund of funds similar to what is working in Indiana, Ohio, and elsewhere is off the ground thanks to public and private efforts. The legislature is looking to expand Wisconsin's successful investor tax credits making at least $3 million in additional credits available this year. That could attract $12 million in venture and angel investment. And groups such as the Wisconsin Technology Council and the Wisconsin Innovation Network are providing formats for investors from Wisconsin, the Midwest, and well beyond to learn what innovations the state's entrepreneurs can offer. This is mainly a private sector issue, of course, and enlightened self-interest is a powerful tool. But more policymakers are coming to understand that without adequate angel and venture capital, Wisconsin's innovation economy won't grow fast enough to replace jobs lost to the recession and global competition. As the election year unfolds, look for leading candidates for public office to weigh in with their ideas on how to make Wisconsin a more venture-friendly state. We've got a strong foundation of ideas, innovators, and angel investors. Now let's do more to attract and incent the venture industry. Thanks, Tom. I'm back with Rod Heiss, president of the Luminous Group and one of the partners in the quarterly WISBusiness.com Tech Leader Survey. Thanks for joining us, Rod. That's my pleasure. First, tell us a bit about how the survey is conducted. Well, ours is a web-based survey, so we send out invitations to 900 executives in advanced manufacturing, infotech, biotech, clean tech, and ag bio, and we typically have about a 30% response rate, which is good for a survey like this. The respondents were much more optimistic about their own companies than the economy as a whole. Why is that? So that's interesting, Liz. Let's take a look at the numbers first. In the fourth quarter survey, 90% said the state's economy was only fair or poor. 70%, on the other hand, said that the prospects for their own company were good or excellent. And I think this is news that we can all take pride in. I mean, here are uh, executives of companies throughout the state uh, in four very competitive sectors uh, saying that the prospects for their company are good, standing in stark contrast to their own ratings of, of the economy. So I think this is something that we all can be very, very pleased about 
Um, the fact that these executives are rating as good the prospects for their company in a very, very turbulent economy. The survey also asked about health care reform. What were the biggest worries expressed by the respondents? Well, the single biggest concern was cost. 80% of those who responded to the survey said cost was the biggest concern for them in terms of health care. And what's really interesting about those folks, the folks who said cost was their biggest concern, is that 50% of them think cost will actually get worse if health care reform passes. About a quarter of them said that it would get better, and about a quarter of them said that it would stay the same. So, uh, you know, eight out of ten saying uh, health care is uh, an incredible concern for them, and uh, about half those folks thinking that it'll get worse. Thanks, Rod, and thank you for watching this edition of WISBusiness.com, the show. The show is produced by WISBusiness.com and the Wisconsin Technology Council and sponsored by Grant Thornton and MG&E. Visit our websites to read and learn more. I'm Liz Shrum. See you next time. Yeah. <sighs>